Um, thanks everybody for attending. Uh, I know a lot of you are dealing with a time zone issue, so I appreciate the extra effort. I'm Eric Rollinson and I work at Red Hat uh, and I uh, work in emerging technologies for uh, the intersection of the uh, machine learning ecosystem with the Kubernetes ecosystem. Um, so today um, I wanna talk to you about uh, quote unquote powering open data hub with Ray. Um, another possible title of the talk could be um, using Jupyter and Ray in the cloud. So the uh, sort of roadmap for the talk is uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Ray at uh, 10,000 meters. Um, then I'm gonna sort of like place Jupyter and open data hub in context for the talk. And then talk about sort of like the architecture of what I did to get Ray working on ODH and then follow that with an actual demo of the architecture and then I want to close with some of the uh, collaborations that made this uh, work possible. So um, the design goal for Ray was to occupy a sort of niche in the ecosystem where it's a higher level and better abstraction than say raw MPI for parallel programming but also um, allow a slightly lower level and more flexible um, series of computational representations than Apache Spark. So it wants to sort of live in the middle there. Um, its compute model is consisted of uh, tasks and actors. And um, <clears throat> there's a nice parallelism um, with Python here. A task is simply analogous to a, a Python function and actors are direct analogs of uh, Python classes. And the uh, programming ergonomics are really very easy. You can take these Python definitions and uh, decorate them with Ray.remote, and Ray will then know how to execute them um, out on its cluster. Um, <clears throat> Ray operates by allowing you to set up uh, compute DAGs. Um, like on the left here, you can see they uh, sort of highly over-engineered way of setting up uh, summing the numbers one through eight. Um, you can see that you create a bunch of add calls using the dot remote um, Ray decoration function that's automatically provided to you if you use Ray dot remote. <coughs> um, and you're building up sort of like a computation. Now I want to talk about uh, this part at the end here, uh, ray.git. Um, Ray has something in common with Spark, which is that it has sort of a lazy declarative compute model. And so the first, the first seven lines up there are just setting up a computation. Nothing at all actually happens until you say ray.get. And so it's a, again, allows, uh, like Spark, it allows Ray to sort of like decide for you how best to run the compute that you ask it to. Um, I took these uh, diagrams from a great blog post by uh, Robert Nishihara. Um, the link there is at the bottom if you uh, recommend it if you want to read more about uh, how Ray does its job. Um, so Ray's primary data model is um, the Plasma Object Store, um, and it is a distributed object store. It's like most data structures uh, in Python. It's just fundamentally typeless and schemaless. Um, the, the store prefers to operate local first. And what that means is it'll pull remote data only if it needs to. And otherwise, it will always prefer to uh, get its data locally on running on Ray workers. Um, so most read-write is local to uh, worker nodes. Um, similarly, Ray's work scheduling model is local first. So it will always prefer to run a compute job on the work node that is already running. Um, otherwise, only if it has to, it will take work elements and push them back to the global scheduler to get rescheduled somewhere else. And so um, anyway, it's local first principle allows Ray to operate fairly efficiently. So to set up the context, um, for you know why Ray with Jupyter. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about the library ecosystem around Ray. Um, out of the box, it comes with hyperparameter tuning, um, 
a reinforcement learning package, a basic stochastic gradient descent, um, and a ray serve for basically doing model serving uh, in a ray cluster. And then in addition, there's a large ecosystem of community integrations. Um, most of the packages you'd be familiar with in the ML space are there. XGBoost, Dask, Horvod, SKLearn. Um, almost everything at this point has got some kind of great integration. Uh, the link at the bottom, you can look at the full list of integrations. So if you look at all these things, um, these are, of course, all packages that data scientists have been using with Jupyter um, for quite a while now. And so when you look at it that way, um, it sort of begs for Ray to be driven from uh, Jupyter notebooks uh, to use these packages accelerated with Ray Compute. Um, and additionally, you know, it gives you the promise of liter literate programming and interactive programming with Ray using Jupyter's environment. Um, and more specifically, um, you know, getting this environment as automatically provided to you uh, with a cloud deployment. And in my case today, um, I'm talking about the Kubernetes uh, container orchestration platform. And uh, more specifically, the flavor of Kubernetes I'm using is uh, OpenShift. So when I first uh, embarked on this uh, <clears throat> study, the primary way of uh, connecting to a Ray cluster was a, uh, the Ray.init function. And uh, this had an interesting property where it only works if you're connecting on the physical node that the Ray head node is running on. And so if you look over on the left to use Jupyter, um, you know, in something like Kubernetes uh, with Ray, you'd actually have to create a single pod that has both Jupyter running and the Ray head node. Um, of course, architecturally, um, this is not very appealing. It's not good separation of concerns. Um, and lo the logistics of actually installing and running Jupyter and Ray are just very awkward to deal with. Um, however, after I reached out to the Array community, um, it turns out they've been also creating a new way to connect, uh, essentially um, a true client server connection where anything on a network visible to the Ray head pod can connect to it using the uh, Ray connect function. So this is a total game changer because it allows much better cloud native architectures and uh, not just Jupyter, but other, you know, applications uh, running, you know, in the cluster can actually connect to Ray and use it as a resource. Um, so as I mentioned, um, you know, I chose that I, that I wanted to try to consume uh, Jupyter um, through the Open Data Hub uh, project. And I'll we'll talk a little bit about what that means. Um, so what is Open Data Hub? Um, you know, firstly, Open Data Hub is an open source downstream of Kubeflow with a few you know, modifications, uh, tuning it for running on OpenShift and uh, other aspects. Um, it operates as a sort of reference platform for using open source machine learning tooling in the cloud. And it's fairly federated, which means that these <coughs> projects um, are relatively loosely integrated. And um, while you, get, you lose something a little bit, you know, you lose possibilities of tight, tight integration. However, um, it makes for a very, very flexible uh, environment. And in fact, it's the flexibility here that allowed me to very easily run, you know, Ray and integrate it with uh, ODH. Um, the components you can get um, do a pretty good job covering like both the different uh, stages of a typical machine learning workflow for cloud native development, um, and they also do a pretty good job of covering all the different persona, um, not just data scientists, obviously, but business stakeholders, uh, you know, app developers, and IT. And of course, Jupiter is at the center of all that. Um, <coughs> Red Hat uh, actually uses its own internal deployment of Open Data Hub. I've uh, done various projects, including, um, you know, clustering operational metrics from OpenShift clusters. Um, analyzing customer support data and um, doing anomaly detection on uh, application logs. So 
my, my job was made easier by the fact that I had a sort of analogy to work from. Um, there's already a Spark integration for ODH, and it works like this. If you bring up the Open Data Hub Jupyter Hub launcher, um, and you pick a Spark-enabled image, um, the first thing it will do, as always, is give you a Jupyter environment. But it will also go out and look for a uh, what's called a single user profile, and I'll talk more about that in a second, um, which tells Ray how to spin up things like Spark clusters to go with your notebooks. Um, and it, in turn, goes and references a uh, service template, which basically gives you all the YAML for things running in Kubernetes or OpenShift. And using that information, it then creates those objects and spins you a little Spark cluster. And once you have that, you're working in Jupyter, and you can simply connect to that. So you have your own self-service personalized data science with Spark backing you. So at a high level, uh, you know, single user profiles and service templates are nothing but Kubernetes config maps. They're just data. Um, and so it obviously, you know, begs for an attempt to replace these with, you know, config maps that tell ODH how to spin up a Ray cluster and uh, connect to that. Um, and so spoiler, it turned out to be relatively easy to do. Um, so here's a single user profile. You can see there's nothing real special here. It's images and resource specifications. So it's all fairly standard, you know, objects and parameters you'll find working with Kubernetes. And likewise, the service template um, is just showing, you know, ODH how to initiate a Ray cluster custom resource, which uh, the Ray operator knows how to use to spin clusters. Um, these are very, very large objects with many parameters, so I'm not going to show them all here, but you can see a few at the top. And again, this is just standard, non-magical Kubernetes type YAML. Uh, and so with that, I will now actually run the run an example of this architecture. Um, first, I've already logged into the cluster. Um, and you can see when you log in, you get a dashboard. It looks like this. And you can see over on the left is Jupyter Hub. So if you launch that, um, it takes a little while, so I'm not going to do it for you now. If you launch that and choose a Ray enabled image, um, you can see that it is spun up. Um, not just a uh, Jupyter Hub environment up here, but it is spun up a, a little Ray cluster for me. Uh, here's the head node running in a pod. Um, it also automatically produces uh, a little service and route that allows you to view the uh, Ray dashboard, which is kind of similar to, like, I think, the Spark dashboard. Um, so if we go and look at a notebook, uh, let's imagine we want to do some data science with Ray. Um, and again, see, so yeah, I will add comments here, uh, leveraging the full literate Jupyter environment. Um, so of course, these uh, create some images that have the Ray dependencies pre-installed, so I can simply import them. Um, <clears throat> I told the Jupyter Hub launcher, how to give it an environment variable here, which has the actual name of the Ray cluster that it spun up. And so I can just use that to connect. And so here you can see I'm testing to see if I'm already connected, because as we know, in Jupyter, you can run cells more than once, and you don't want to like try to reconnect twice. So Ray doesn't really like that. And so here you can see it gives me a little information about the uh, head node that I connected to. Um, I'm going to be doing an XGBoost example today, and um, there's an XGBoost Ray uh, integration you can see here, and it just provides some drop-in replacements that work just like all the normal XGBoost objects, but uh, are able to leverage Ray. And so here we're going to load up uh, the sklearn predefined uh, breast cancer data set just as a simple example, and we're going to create a Ray uh, D matrix object so that uh, it can actually be easily parallelized. Uh, now that we have our data, you can run a little XGBoost training run. And here you can see 
we're using the actual overloaded train function and we're also giving it some array parameters and there are many parameters here you can use but the fundamental one is you know, what kind of parallelism do you want it to use and i'm just asking it to produce two actors here a very small little parallelism case so we'll let it kick off here uh, ray likes to uh, give you lots of log output um, is producing its actors to do a training run and even before i can finish talking about it it's come back and finished um, and so i've got a model that was trained in parallel using a self-service ray cluster um, but of course that's only part of the story um, the reason you like to be in jupiter is you know to use things you can do in Jupiter as well as Ray. So we can do things like examine training results and cells. So this thing actually has a very low error rate um, and better yet visualization. Um, and so we can take this and do a little scatter plot of the raw um, logistic regression output versus the truth. And of course we'd like all the things that are one to be to the right of our dashed line and things that are zero to be the left, and we can see it's almost always true. Um, so there's a little visual representation. Um, and <clears throat> it also provides you with a the name of the actual uh, URL to connect to uh, the Ray dashboard, which as you can see, I already have done. Uh, so. Um, what is the story here? It, I think that in addition to just simply having easy parallelism back in your compute, um, I think the bigger story is that it's not just easy, it's flexible. Um, Ray can support all kinds of, you know, tooling from the ML space, you know, XGBoost, but also Horovod, Pandas, Scikit-Learn, many more. Um, and so this architecture of simply connecting to your familiar tooling with JupyterHub, but backing all the compute with Ray um, is a very unified platform. And not just unified, but simplified. So in a sense, it can actually simplify your cluster deployments for data science. You're running a single backing cluster, array cluster, to do all of your compute instead of bespoke operators for each of the tools. Um, so the demo you just saw was running uh, up on the Massachusetts Open Cloud, um, which is run in a partnership between uh, Boston University uh, and Red Hat, and also a large collaborative consortium of different universities and some uh, interested businesses. And um, anybody can get up on the Massachusetts Open Cloud. I'll show you a link in a minute. Um, and if you do this, you can run all these examples plus some others that I've created. Um, and you'll get a smallish cluster with a maximum of five workers. Uh, I recently upgraded the memory to three gigabytes. And the images have some common tooling installed. Um, uh, in addition, the uh, particular OpenShift deployment that I ran on the Mass Open Cloud um, is being maintained using the Operate First project. Uh, this is a uh, a project being run at Red Hat where we're exploring how to extend the familiar open source principles of developing software in the open to also operating the software and the services in the open. Um, and you can read more about that at the link at the bottom. Um, so as you might guess, this has a very strong GitOps flavor to it. And so here you can actually go view the pull requests that I produced to uh, create this deployment of Ray with Open Data Hub. Um, the link is at the bottom. Uh, lastly, you know, uh, there's a lot more to do. Um, it'd be good to get like the Ray operator as a community Ray operator through the operator catalog. Um, you know, it'd like be nice to get standardized build pipelines for all the Ray imagery, uh, hopefully using uh, Red Hat's project Toth to do the building. Um, and I'm hoping for more community use cases. I'm hoping more people try to use deployment to do data science with. And I definitely like to get a formal integration uh, of Ray with Kubeflow and Open Data Hub. And also there's a lot of potential here for 
running nodes in ML pipelines, like KF pipelines, where each node could actually reference a Ray cluster. And so, uh, again, thank you for coming to my talk. Um, I invite you to uh, play with Ray uh, up on the Mass Open Cloud. You can see the uh, link at the bottom there to go look at it. Um, the instructions for using the Ray imagery is also um, at the second link. And uh, if you have problems or suggestions, file issues or pull requests uh, with the Operate First environment. And uh, please feel free to reach out to me at my email if you have questions or comments. Uh, thanks, everybody.